What's up guys, War here, welcome back to the channel. So this morning, I finally, last night, we spent all last night putting together chain lightning and let me tell you this build actually surprised me a lot with all the lightning sphere builds that are going around and it's arguably that's the best build in the game i had to try out chain lightning because of the new actual conduit pants just to see if this is really good because it was bugged in the ptr and let me tell you infinite mana chain lightning melts absolutely everything so in today's video i'm gonna break down the skills the gear the paragon all that good stuff for you and then we're gonna go fight an uber boss and just showcase the build just a little bit um i fought i fought another one this morning and just to really test the build and we got another shako which is absolutely crazy um so let's go over into our skill tree here just to break everything down now this is still a work in progress as far as the paragon board when we get there because i want to add another legendary node but in the meantime Let's go ahead and go through the skills. So we got Firebolt here. This is just going to allow us to do some burning damage and use Flame Feeder from our Paragon board. We do not use a basic, as you see here. It is also in our very first enchantment slot, okay? So we get that nice burning damage, which is so, so strong. Next, we are doing one point into Devastation with max three points into Elemental Dominance for even more mana. Now we're going to be doing Chain Lightning, the bread and butter of this build, down into Greater Chain Lightning. Now... Some of my community members in my chat were talking to me about, well, well war, or do you, why not use destructive? So destructive can give you crackling energy, but let me tell you, like when you're farming like T7 or T8 infernal hordes, or you're like, you're running through a dungeon against bosses, it's not really going to matter, but against the infernal hordes and stuff, you make plenty of static or plenty of crackling energy just with one point into the static discharge. You can add more if you want, like you can take points out of here. For the extra frozen if you want to and just do it that way um i really i really like i'm back and forth on this like i want to take this point back out and put this here uh but like one point into static just charge is just fine now i do have charge bolts in here with enhance just from extra damage now you saw me swap the point back out uh if you are pushing a little bit or you feel like you're a little bit uh you're taking too much damage when you're doing the infernal hordes definitely put the point back into destructive charge bolts because when we pop unstable currents they're going to deal 25% less damage to us for three seconds. It's huge. It's just like more damage uh, reduction. It's fantastic. Um, however, you could also do this. You could take Flame Shield away, put Ice Blades on the bar instead of Flame Shield, and then take the point out of there and put it there as well if you want to stay three at the Horfrost. Uh, but that's totally up to you. Right now, I just do, the, do that so I can flop back and forth. Uh, in here, we got Flame Shield for our emergency button. Uh, then we got Teleport into Shimmering for the damage reduction. Then we got uh, Glass Cannon for more damage and then Elemental Attunement to reset a defensive skill. Now with Ice Armor, here's the thing. I'm always back and forth on this. Like Mystical Ice Armor is nice because we are going to be up close to do the more um, chilled. Like, and then if we happen to freeze them, then, you know, we're going to be able to do 15% multiplicative. But a lot of times I really love Shimmering because you basically get permanent uptime with it now. So... It's, I go back and forth on this depending on what kind of content I'm doing, but either one will work perfectly fine. Uh, then we come down into Ice Blades, into Summoned Ice Blades for the cooldown, which is our second um, enchantment slot, which is just awesome. So that way we get maximum cooldown here. Then we got Lightning Spear into Invoked, of course. We love the stun, and then we also love the um, making enemies vulnerable, which is fantastic. Max points into Conjuration. One point to align the elements for DR, and then we max out mana shield for damage reduction, as well as protection for the barrier. Barrier is very important. Then we come down, and we're getting inner flames into devouring blaze. I got the bonus three because I got it on my amulet. I'm still trying to roll the other one for max ranks of conjuration, but let me tell you, man, the weight on that it's so hard to get. So if you find an amulet with max conjuration and max devouring blaze, that's what you're looking for. Then, of course, the one point in the stack just charged for the crackling energy. And again, I'll talk about this in the Paragon board, but the reason we want this is for the charged Paragon node or glyph, excuse me. So we get 15% multiplicative damage. Then we're coming down permafrost for more damage, but then more importantly, horror frost. So we do even more damage to chilled and even more damage to uh, frozen enemies, which against bosses is insane. Then we got uh, course and currents for the crit strike chance and then electrocution for just a little bit less damage that we're taking. Uh, then we got Unstable Currents into Prime for the attack speed. This thing pops all of our uh, electrical skills here, our shock skills. And then, of course, we're doing Veers of Mastery because this thing is super busted. Um, now, let's let's go into our gear pieces here. Now, I have a lot of gear pieces that you can swap in and out. And 
there's a few different ways to play this and through testing um let me grab let me grab the other gear through testing all last night this is probably by far the best setup that we have okay so i do have a regular helmet that you can put in a regular helmet is fine you could use god slayer you could use shaco you could use any one of those however undarios is by far the best okay the reason for this is because in our amulet we are doing starlight okay starlight is highly underrated all right gain 60 of your primary resource for every 20 percent of life that you heal Andario says i heal 568 life on hit when i'm spamming chain lightning you're gonna see my mana just not go anywhere this is the duo of powers and items that allow you to spam chain lightning non-stop because through testing axel conduit it alternates between you and after draining 66 total mana then it explodes right like that's great but i often found if i wasn't able to keep my mana like being able to manage that then i just run out of mana and everything resets and it takes a second so i really really didn't like that and when demon shout out to demon when he said hey dude you need to do starlight with endarios i said wait what i'm like do people actually use starlight yes they do for this build only so this combo here is insane and then on the amulet of course you want attack speed you want to get rid of the critical strike chance and you want to get the um conjur conjuration mastery um so that's that option there next is tyrios might this one is not required for the build whatsoever but this one just helps with move speed helps with your uh, all res and then helps with your damage reduction so if you don't want to use Tyrael's Might, you can come in and use something like this, where you get Intelligence Max Life and Mana per second, and then more Max Life with a chance to freeze. And then you put on um, Concentration for the um, damage reduction there. This is perfectly fine. You do not have to run Tyrael's Might. However, you will get some extra damage because while you're at full life, the skills unleash and you get the Divine Barrage. So, but it's not required. So if you don't have that, you're okay. Next is Fist in the Fate. This one is absolutely juiced. Uh, Fist in the Fate is very, very good. So not only are we applying the random crowd control effects, but we need the lucky hit chance. The main reason that we need this high lucky hit chance is because Crackling Energy, or excuse me, Crackling Energy, Chain Lightning originally has a low lucky hit. So if we move this, our lucky hit's only 32%. So if we put this back in here, now we go to 56. So... As much as I don't like the attacks that randomly deal, it's not going to matter. We're going to deal so much damage, it's ridiculous. But we need that. So on the lucky hit with our weapon, we have a chance to restore primary resource, and that will help. However, with this combo, you don't necessarily need it, but I'm just keeping it on there to make sure my mana is maxed at all times. If you test this and you don't need this additional lucky hit chance on your weapon, then put it as vulnerable damage or crit strike damage. Either one is fine. I would probably lean towards crit strike damage. Uh, but Fist of the Fate is insane. However, if you don't want this and you don't want to run it, that is okay. You can run these gloves right here. Just make sure you get attack speed, crit strike chance, and then ranks to chain lightning with freeze and critical strike damage. So, and then we would put Storm Swell on our gloves. So either one is fine. I think that Fist of Fate just works better for me. However, you can run these. I've swapped them and it works just fine because even with this, now we're at 32% was still good, but now we get 16 ranks of Chain Lightning, which is pretty is pretty hefty. So we go from 42,000 at the high end to you know 50,000, so we gain 8,000 more damage on the skill itself, which is crazy. So, But you can use either one of those. And then, of course, Axel Conduit. Then in our boots, we're doing Orange Herald. This is a new one. Okay, on a lucky hit, this is the other reason why we want a high lucky hit. On lucky hit, we got a chance to reduce the cooldown of our ultimate for two seconds. That just helps us try to get permanent uptime on unstable currents. Um, very, very good. Again, get some armor so that way your, your armor gets maxed. Movement speed, chance to immobilize, very good. Um, our two-hander weapon here. Now, what I didn't understand at first when I was playing this with Axel Conduit is that the power, the bolt that explodes, scales from weapon damage. So I was originally doing a one hand and an off hand to have an additional power because I really liked the lightning rod power and it would chain lightning has a chance to deal 80% multiplicative increased damage. This chance is doubled against bosses and crowd controlled enemies and prefers them as targets. So with fist of fate, applying a random CC effect always, 
on top of our boot CC effect, this would allow us to have a 50% chance to always deal 80% increased damage. So that's, that's very, very good. However, when I was doing the Infernal Horde, the two-hander just felt better. But what I will say is it's very, very close. So if you want to go with two weapons, that's fine. You'll get a little bit more cooldown uh, like I have here. And then you do um, Storm Swell with Lightning Rod, and that would be just fine. Um, but I, I like the two-hander for now. Um, next, of course, Starless Skies just, just helps us with, uh, you know, when we're, when we're spamming, our attack speed's insane. More lucky hit chance, which is great. Talrashas, of course. Um, and then, of course, with Talrashas with Andario Fassage because we get the lucky hit chance to trigger the Poison Nova. We get all four stacks here instead of three stacks, which is fantastic. And then, of course, Starlight here. So uh, that is the gear, guys. Let's go into the Paragon real quick. And I'm running seven nodes right now. I really want to get to eight. So I really want to put Reinforced back in for even more damage reduction while you have a barrier because it's just nuts. But in the meantime, I'm doing Charge for the Crackling Energy for 15% Multiplicative. We're doing Destruction for Crit. We are doing Elementalist for all damage increase. And we're doing exploit for vulnerable damage, but it's 10% multiplicative again. And then we got flame feeder for 10% more damage. We got tactician for even more 10% multiplicative damage when we spam a defensive skill. And then we got unleashed for the mana regen, 8% multiplicative damage, and mana regeneration. Um, the legendary nodes that we were rocking today are frigid fate. We almost got this maxed. Um, then we got elemental summoner. This one I'm back and forth on because we're not really doing a lot of damage with our conjurations itself but this does help with lightning spear which is very very prominent this season so i'm still iffy on this one um i might take this out but we don't necessarily need that i'm just still testing with the paragon board but right now everything feels really good so i'm just going to leave it um and then we have static surge after spending 100 mana this gives us another chance to make enemies vulnerable which i don't think we need but this just helps us a lot it just maintains it uh just fine so what I really want to do is, is uh, I kind of want to take these nodes away and take these nodes away and add an eighth board, which would be reinforced, uh, reinforced, which is great. But so far, I haven't had any issues. I mean, Sorceress is already fragile, you know, with her HP and all that stuff. But uh, the build just absolutely slaps. So we're going to go in. I got Beast of the Ice right here ready and queued up. This is probably a bad one to do because we're still only getting one doll from this. So it's not really worth the mats, but I'm just going to do it anyway since I'm here. Um, yeah, it's just, you're going to see how fast we can, how fast we can just go through and spam our chain lightning. It's pretty busted. Um, it's, it's pretty busted. And you can see he just gets absolutely deleted. Absolutely deleted. Um, it's not even, it's not even close. Not even close. The fight I did before I got a Shaco. <laughs> You see, we only get one doll, which is still a bummer. That is a bug that's going to get fixed. So, but the build is pretty insane. Pretty insane. Oh, I'm full. Uh, let's let's just put this there and this there. So we got the gloves. Uh, let me check and see if I have one for Duriel, so you guys can see that. Because <clears throat> that would be sweet to to fight Duriel, but. The build absolutely slaps. Once I was able to do Andarials and Starlight Choker, like it was, it, it just worked. Like the build just absolutely worked. Okay, I don't have any Durial uh, stuff. But um, yeah, once I was able to do that, the build just absolutely slaps. So it's, it's surprisingly more fun than I thought. However, I will say for people who are wondering, Lightning Spear is still going to be stronger than this build, and that is okay. Oh my god, I just got a zero fireball. Let's go. Um, so it's it's still really good. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. Uh, but I will say that the, the Lightning Spear build is still super strong. So let's get rid of all that. Perfect. Let's throw these gloves up here. Fantastic. But yeah, the build absolutely slaps, guys. So like the video let's get this over 100 likes comment down below let me know what you guys think about chain lightning and axle conduit it, it can do everything in the game destroys all the bosses uber bosses destroys all of the uh it i've only done up to t7 in the infernal horde with this build uh because i'm not ready to go to t8 yet i don't have everything to, to 12 but i still got a lot of stuff that's just at eight this one's at four so 
Um, still got a lot of work to do on the gear, but for right now, it can do all content in the game. And, and I move so fast. I just blitz through Nightmare Dungeons. I can do everything. Like, this is great for the um, Helltide, all that good stuff. So, yeah, guys, comment down below. Let me know what you guys think. Don't forget to subscribe. And as always, stay gaming, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.